Hi guys, it's Wee Ghost here. So back in the day, many years ago, one of the earliest examples of a Mario Kart ROM hack was this game, Mario Kart Black. And it was essentially a texture hack of the original Mario Kart game. Um, it didn't actually really add any new gameplay features, it just had new maps, um, some new music, and um, some silly things like changing the names of the levels to stupid stuff. Um, but it was still an interesting concept because it was one of the earlier examples of people adding custom stuff to the Mario Kart game and ROM hacking it. Now, if you, can, you can see quite a few videos of it online and it looks really interesting, but the really difficult thing is it's actually very hard to find an ISO file for it. Um, I don't know why, whether it's just because it's old now or what, but I looked around on the internet and really found it very difficult to find one. However, you needn't worry because the good thing is that it is now possible to play the actual textures from it um, using custom Mario Kart. So I thought it would be fun to show you guys how it looked in case you haven't seen it. Um, and this is one of the first times that I've played Mario Kart using custom textures so it's a bit of a fun experience, a learning curve for me in many ways. Now it's interesting if you look into the history of Mario Kart Black because you can... oopsie daisy that wasn't very good. Um, people actually could buy a physical copy of it, like they actually paid for it and, you know, bought a physical um, version of it, which it may have come as a surprise to people when they bought that and uh, then opened it and realised it was essentially the same game, it just looked a little bit different. <laughs> I don't know. The fun thing for me though is that, well, I've been trying to get the three gold stars recently and that involves a lot of playing the same levels over and over again. So it's actually quite nice to play with a texture hack that makes things look a little bit different and just adds a bit of variety to things. Now, you will notice that uh, this level looks really different and, you know, with it being called Mario Kart Black, you kind of expect that most of the levels will be much darker in terms of colour palette and indeed the majority of them are. But this one doesn't. This one looks really light and happy and golden and very yellow. Um, the really fun thing about this level though is um, take a look at the cows when we go past them next because they really do, <laughs> they look really deranged and evil. Um, they're a very nice touch. But on the whole, the, um, the retexturings that I've liked the most out of this pack um, have been the ones that have made the levels look uh, on the whole a lot darker. I think the kind of thing that they were going for was to make the game yeah, appear and feel much darker. Um, and the front cover of it, if you have a look at it online, was basically kind of like twisted metal. Um, and I think the music that, that came with it was um, a bit more gritty, a bit darker. It wasn't unfortunately the Twisted Metal soundtrack, which was really good, like a load of heavy metal. <laughs> um, but as I said, sadly, um, I don't have the music that came with it or any of the um, changed text and things for the levels. But anyway, that doesn't matter. You can still see um, how it would have looked. Um, I am playing using the Wiimote and Nunchuk again now. I was using the GameCube controller for quite a while, but it sort of annoyed me because I found it very difficult to dodge the POWs. Um, because obviously with my Wiimote and Nunchuk, I can just shake it and carry on steering, which you can't do when you're using a GameCube controller. Um, and so I ended up like a few times messing up the levels because I wouldn't be able to dodge it. So I've gone back to what I know, the old and comfortable combination of the Wiimote and Nunchuk. And I am now using Funky Kong because I think that um, playing as the lightweight characters, yeah, they have good acceleration, but I was finding it very difficult to get the three gold stars um, because the top speed is just too low. Now this is one of the better texture hacks. Uh, Mushroom Gorge just looks incredible. It's really got a spooky twilight forest feel. Um, everything looks really fluorescent and luminescent in the dark and yeah, this is one of the better ones that I've played. I really like what they've done with this. If you take a look in a minute when we get into the cave, um, you'll see all these cool... Oh god, I'm really getting barged off. All these cool fluorescent green bits and yeah, I think it just looks really mysterious. Here you go, look at that. It's all like glow-in-the-dark fungus. Um, yeah, this feels like you're in a twilight spooky forest. I, I love what they've done with this. Um, I think it's, unfortunately, the quality is a little bit hit and miss, and I really shouldn't have used my mushroom there. Um, some of the levels have really good text hacks like this one, and some of the other ones look a little bit less inspired and less interesting. Um, 
But anyway, yeah, I really like this one. I love the fact that the mushrooms in the ceiling look all red and um, intimidating. So yeah, really impressed with this one. One of the better ones. Ah, see if we can get ourselves a good power up. At least give me a shell. Ah, three mushrooms. So yeah, I've been getting a lot better at tactically placing the mushrooms and the fake item boxes. I've just been barged so badly that I've gone off course, which is very frustrating. And the reason why is because once you actually learn how you get the three gold stars, you realise it's actually really important to take out the um, uh, the CPU characters. Oh man, I don't know why I didn't activate that invincible there. Um, because if you take them out, particularly with tactical items, I'll well, have that mushroom, um, like bananas or green shells, um, it adds to your speed. Um, and so you really do need to be trying to take on the CPUs if you can. Um, so you get much better at that when you're trying to go for three gold stars. Right, this is no good. I can't be in last place. Oh, for God's sake. And that's the problem with having the golden mushroom, is that you just spam it. I'm clearly not, not paying attention enough. I'm too busy looking at all of the lovely levels and nattering. And, and not playing very well. Um, I think that I've fluffed it up so badly that I'm now not going to be able to get even in the top five. Oh well, just don't worry about that. Someone just launched out a blue shell. Um, maybe we can get fifth. No, I'm going to be in sixth. Who cares? Let's try and make up for it on the last level. Talking too much and paying attention too little. Doesn't matter. Okay, here we have it, Toad's Factory. And <laughs> this is, in my opinion, not one of the good texture hacks. Um, it appears that Toad has sold his soul and now work, works for the multinational corporation <laughs> making Coca-Cola. And the whole factory is just plastered with these rather cheap looking Coca-Cola textures. Which, yeah, it, it just looks a little bit cheap and a little bit stretched. Um, you can see in the background there, it's literally spammed everywhere. It's like someone downloaded the coca-cola logo from the internet and then just put it on absolutely everything <laughs> um, never mind um, yeah as I said the quality of the texture hacks is very variable and this in my opinion is not one of the better ones um, it's just like look at it look at it there in the background literally just coca-cola over absolutely everything I thought Toad was a good guy I didn't know that he was gonna sell out and just end up making a huge amounts of profit from fizzy drinks um, this is not going well the thing that I noticed the most about playing the 150 CC is that oh god we're both stuck in the muck and by muck I mean coca-cola logos is that you need to stay ahead because if you slip behind just a little bit and end up stuck in the pack it becomes really hectic because you just end up getting shafted from all angles by a million and one power-ups it's just like, you know, you really, once you end up in that little peloton, you just get screwed. Well, that was good. I managed to activate an invincible there just at the time that the power was coming. I might actually manage to win this one. I uh, shouldn't speak too soon, though, knowing my track record on the last level. And I keep taking that corner really badly, um, which is not good. I'm obviously still getting used to playing as uh, Funky Kong and cocking it up a little bit. Um, I need to turn a little bit earlier, I think, or just get the angle of the jump a bit better. Right, squid's in. Uh, that should affect the CPU a bit. Maybe the CPU will now cock it up and hit into the um, Coca-Cola boxes. Um, we're really getting in the way of Toast production here. Smashing into his conveyor belts full of Coca-Cola. I mean, this is serious amounts of Coca-Cola. Oh man, there's mushrooms absolutely everywhere. Oh, I've drank too much Red Bull. I'm not racing well. <laughs> hey, there's every chance I might make it. Let's see if we can actually not cock this corner up for once. Nope. Uh, okay, yes. Just by bouncing into them. Um, fair enough. Well, at least I managed to get first on that one. Didn't race particularly well, but there you have it. That's the first cup on the Mario Kart Black Textures. Take care, guys, and I'll speak to you all soon. Bye.